this is the second video in a series in which I am trying to repair this ADM 3A dumb terminal or interactive terminal as they're often called. In the previous video we had a quick look at the terminal, had a look at the main board and in this video I want to look at the actual CRT monitor and make sure that's working. We've got some work that we need to do on it before proceeding with the repair. And I'm um, taking my usual approach here. I've just got this hooked up um, to some signal generators in the power supply. And uh, we'll try powering it up and make sure that the actual display board works and that the CRT is capable of showing a picture. So I've got another camera in front of the uh, monitor so we should be able to see uh, what's actually on the screen. So I'll turn the supply on and we'll see if we get anything on the screen. I can see the heater starting to glow, you can just see it through the neck of the tube there. I'll turn the signal generators on and then wait for the tube to warm up. And as we can see we're getting something on the tube now. I'll just increase the drive voltage on the video slightly and I'll change the waveform that we're using to give us something a bit more useful. Okay, I'll try to synchronise that a little bit better. And as you can see, very nice clear display, nice and bright. Good resolution and definition, so we're getting nice straight edges to the pattern, uh, which is what we want to see and of course we can vary the intensity by altering the drive. So that's looking good. I'll turn this off and then we'll look at the next step in repairing this machine. So looking at the front of the monitor we can see what the next job will be. We've got these uh, cataracts starting up on the tube. Very common problem with this uh, type of tube and these terminals are also notorious for this. Uh, it kind of depends on how it's been stored, but uh, mostly it comes down to uh, any contaminants in the original uh, adhesive and uh, how exposed it's been to external contaminants. What causes this, and I should just point out this is not on the surface, no amount of cleaning will get rid of this because it's not on the outside. What we have is the CRT and then we've got on the outside of the CRT a completely separate safety glass complete separate piece of glass that's bonded to the front of the actual tube and these cataracts are breaking down of the adhesive between the safety glass and the tube itself. So there are various ways you can approach this, sometimes just heating will reduce it but it won't get rid of it and it will come back very quickly after that. On this one it's not going to help, we've got some discoloration at the top and the bottom as well and the only real solution for this particular tube is to take the safety glass off, remove all the adhesive and then refit the safety glass. Um, this is not a job for the faint-hearted, it is quite a, a tricky and fairly dangerous operation um, but step one is to remove the tube. So I get the tube out of the monitor, it's very easy to remove, it's just a couple of bolts uh, and then I'll get back on camera and show uh, what the next step after that will be. Okay, I've got the tube unbolted. The next thing I need to do is disconnect the EHT cable. Now, as I've mentioned previously, the CRT is effectively a very large capacitor and it could have up to 12,000 volts uh, charge on it. So I need to make sure it's discharged before I attempt to disconnect this. The easiest solution um, is to attach some ground leads as I've done here, clip the other end to a screwdriver, make sure you've got plenty of insulation at the end, ease this gently underneath the cap and then push it in all the way keeping your fingers well away from the metal. And if there's any charge in there at all you'll hear it discharge but do it several times and I recommend you leave it in there for a minute or so um, just to make absolutely certain that there's no charge on there. Even once you've done this, I don't recommend sticking your tongue on the connector. It might still have some residual charge on there, so uh, treat this with caution. Uh, 
all the time, don't assume it's discharged even if you've done this, uh, it can still have a considerable charge built up on it. So once you've done this, we should be safe now to remove the cap. Okay, I have the cap removed. Again, I'm going to assume this is still charged up, so I'm going to put it down out of the way. And I'm not going to touch that. And again, we'll make absolutely certain this is discharged. Okay, so the next step is what to do about the tube. So I'll get the monitor off the bench and show you the setup I normally use for dealing with cataracts on tubes like this. So looking at the tube face, we can see it's quite bad. There's no way really to recover this without taking the safety glass off. Uh, there are various other sort of methods you could try, uh, but really the only proper solution is to remove the glass, get rid of all the uh, glue, and then reattach the safety glass. Um, again, risky operation, so there's probably 20% chance the tube could fail uh, during this. And um, if it's successful, we end up with what is effectively a new tube, and it will look very much better. Um, worst case, we'll have to replace the tube, uh, but we can't really use it as it is here anyway, so um, it's uh, only a, a possibility of winning. We can't really lose much at this point. Um, safety is very important if you do attempt something like this. If you haven't done it before, I certainly do not recommend doing it on your own. Um, but um, what I'll do in this video is I'll, I'll skip through this part of the process. And um, if you want to see the entire process in more detail, then leave a comment and I'll post a separate video showing this process. Uh, otherwise, what I'll do is take the shortcut route for doing this and um, it'll save us some time in this video. Okay, well that didn't take too long, a lot easier than I expected, and this is now ready to go back into the chassis. Let me know if you want to see the other method of doing this, and uh, I'll post a separate video. Um, but as you can see, the tube looks a lot better, cataracts are all gone, and uh, all I have to do now is see if it still works. While I had the CRT out, I thought it would be a good opportunity to tidy up the case. So I've removed all the extra stickers that shouldn't be there. Unfortunately, it had caused some fading where this sticker uh, had been, so I had to re-blend the paint on the uh, uh, outside of the case. But it has come up very well. It's all now blended in, and it all looks uh, a very nice, even colour. Uh, case is in very good condition, no physical damage, and now it's nice and clean. It uh, should look much better with the tube fitted. So I'll pop the board back in, get the tube in, and we'll have a look at it, and uh, then we can try the tube and see if it still works. So that's how the tube looks back in the case. Um, as you can see, no sign of um, cataracts. Very nice, clean um, tube. Uh, but let's see if it still works. Okay, well, after all that, let's see if it still works. Turn on the power. Turn on the signal generators. And uh, wait for the tube to warm up. So, looking very promising. Uh, you've probably seen flicker on the camera of course, but uh, there's no flicker evident on the screen. Uh, and again we can see the flyback um, traces, the very thin short horizontal lines. That's just because there's no flyback blanking with this setup that I have here. But uh, as you can see, um, all signs of the cataracts have gone. I'll try a few different um, signals so we can get a better look at the tube uh, full screen right across the area. You see it bouncing, that's just because the signals aren't synchronised. So, nice white foreground, nice dark clear background. Very much better than it was. And this is what I meant about the um, thickness of the tube. You can see the tube comes right up to the front of the case. If we hadn't put the spacing in between the um, protective uh, glass and the actual face of the tube, then we'd have a gap here that would be the thickness of that um, 
uh, glue, that adhesive that was there, which is about five millimeters. We'd have this ugly five millimeter gap all the way around. We could, of course, try modifying the mounts, but it's just easier and safer, of course, to keep it how it's supposed to be. Um, so that's a success. Uh, it doesn't always work. Sometimes the tube will fail. It's fairly rare, but it can happen. Um, but as you can see, we have uh, now a very nice uh, tube. As I said before, this is not something I'd recommend you do unless you've got some advice from someone and some help. Um, I've done quite a few of these, so that it's relatively easy, but it is time consuming. It takes most of a day to do one of these. And um, as I say, it can be quite dangerous, but it's well worth it. We've resurrected the tube. It's going to be fine now for many years to come. And um, it saves us having to try and source a brand new tube for it. So uh, comments welcome.